afternoon, good morning, good evening everyone. My name is Joe and welcome to Battlesnake Coding Badly. Uh, let me bring on my co-host and let's kick off the show for the day. Please welcome Kevin. Sup? Hello Kevin, how are you? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. I, I am excited for today. <laughs> I appreciated the energy behind that sup. Genuinely brought a smile to my face. Um, so, energy today, lots of cool things happening. What are we here to do if you are new to the show? Um, Battlesnake is a programming game where you write the brain for a little snake that will compete in a multiplayer game of snake, puttering around the board, trying to grab food, trying to outgrow other snakes, trying to outwit other snakes and generally succeeding. And here on Coding Badly, we try to push the boundary of what is possible with Battlesnake in various ridiculous ways. And so for the last seven weeks, um, we have been doing what we call the relay. Um, that has gone fine. How do you feel about that? I'm mostly excited because it's done after today. Um, it was, <laughs> so, so, so the relay, basically, uh, we started with the JavaScript starter snake and we yep. invited seven guests, uh, with this being the seventh episode, uh, and the conclusion of every stream, uh, marks the handing off of that snake to the next developer. Uh, and we thought yes. it was going to start really like quite, you know, tame and maybe growing complexity. And it went to 100 in episode one. And we've yes. been reeling ever since. Absolute nonsense immediately. If you would like to see the full journey, obviously you can go to the YouTube or the Twitch on one of the episodes but you can also see the code base down at github.com forward slash joe nash forward slash coding badly relay so as kevin said every other week every show a developer has come on added to this code base written very conscientiously this is one thing that has surprised me and that has been lovely the level of like documentation and respect for the snake person so one of the things that we hoped would happen in this series was that like as each developer was making their contribution uh they would be seeing uh, sowing some seeds of chaos for the next developer and that has definitely happened um <laughs> yeah. in terms of the code that's been added and the approaches that have been taken but they've left proper documentation and tips to make it usable for the next person that's gonna be very nice um so i guess the quick recap as kevin said we start with the javascript starter snakes we we're like everyone will do javascript corey immediately turned it into a go snake that was running in the original javascript snake by compiling the go to WebAssembly to wasm um, we then had an episode where the find folks digitalization came and uh, made it easy to deploy that because now the build process was quite complicated. Um, then I'm actually, I need to bring up the, oh, then was it Gary Hawkins next? I've actually forgotten the order we went in. At some point, Naomi turned it into TypeScript. Um, yeah. Then finally, we had some logic. We actually didn't have any snake logic written until episode four. Um, and then that was Gary Hawkins who added the first logic. Yeah, Gary Hawken had the first logic. Naomi turned it to TypeScript. Penelope, who is in chat, good morning, memes and dreamers, um, made it smart and added Minmax. And then Battlesnake's own Rob last week came and added a heuristic and tidied up load stuff. Penelope also fixed all of our code crimes and made even more of it into Go. Um, and now our next guest is here to take us to the finish line, to grab the baton and stride triumphantly through the ribbon. So let me add our guest to the stage. Please welcome Alec. How are you doing, Alec? Let's add you Hello. at the top. Let's swap us around. Yeah. There we go. You can live up there. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And for folks who haven't caught uh, a deep episode of Deep Learning recently, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Alec. I uh, work over at New Relic on a lot of our uh, incident observability ecosystem. Uh, that's around getting, you know, uh, lots of curated uh, dashboards and alerts so you can, you know, get up and running quickly uh, with monitoring for your code base. Um, yeah, I'm a lead engineer over there, and that's mostly what I do. And then I'm in my free time, sometimes I do a little bit of battle snake stuff. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, also, huge props to Alec, who uh, you, we try to give all of the relay runners sufficient warning. They got booked well in advance. We were very organized, and we we would send them. Uh, the latest contribution as soon as it was ready. Uh, Alec has tagged him very last minute here, and so he has been a trooper. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you, Lorne, for subscribing with your Prime. That is very much appreciated. Um, and so you had a look at the code base uh, after um, Rob's contributions, and you immediately had uh, some ideas that made me afraid, but also made Penelope very happy. What is it we're going to be attempting today? <laughs> those those yeah. things is like a Venn diagram. Yeah, uh, the things, things that, that make Joe afraid, worried. things that make Penelope happy. <laughs> yeah. just... <laughs> just a big circle. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna attempt. Uh, I'm not gonna say we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna attempt to add uh, alpha beta pruning to the min max uh, function we have here. Perfect. And yeah, um, this uh, alpha this min max fu function is uh, far different than the one that I implemented before. It looks to be much better than the ones I've implemented <laughs> in the past. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna try my best. Awesome. Perfect. Um, hi, Jay Lafette and Real Canadian Cheddar. So with that, let's throw up your screen, which I'm already very excited because we have a Wikipedia page open, which is always the start of an excellent stream. I think it's the only way to get started with <laughs> uh, some of these algorithms, in my opinion. Uh <laughs> yeah, which even then, like, I don't. I haven't read this particular Wikipedia page since the second year of my university degree, uh, but a lot of these algorithms do not have exactly accessible Wikipedia pages. Oh, Penelope is excited. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go. Perfect. Um, so, for let's take one step back um, before we get into what alpha beta pruning is. What is a min-max and why does it need to be pruned and why are there Greek letters? Yeah, I can definitely get into that. Let's open up that Wikipedia page real quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, you notice I was already on this page. Um, Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, so I think there's a nice little diagram in here. Um, oh, there we go. Well, those, I don't know how useful those are. But yeah, so um, a min max search is basically an adversarial um, algorithm to basically, you know, go through a game state and make decisions uh, based on a certain type of heuristic. Usually that's winning or losing. Right. Um, so basically it's like, you know, you, you have in this case, um, you know, two moves you can make. Uh, so then, you know, your game tree splits up into the two moves you can make, and then it splits up into the two moves your opponent can make and so on. Right. And it keeps going down. Yeah. Uh, as we get into this code base, we'll see that it's, um, not quite that pattern. Um, it's right. not a, cause which it's like, is probably what Penelope kind of was just talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And definitely an issue with my initial uh, min-max implementation right. when I first did it uh, was definitely right. that. Uh, and sorry, yeah, just to so, just to jump um, on that point, you're saying it's a little bit different because Battle Snake, the terms are simultaneously simultaneous rather than being like chess, where it's like you take a turn, I take a turn. We have imperfect knowledge, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like a much, um, and, and then also you have multiple opponents. A lot of these are set right. up to be right. um, just one opponent. You got to kind of figure out how you're going to extend that algorithm to work for multiple opponents and simultaneous yeah. turns and all that stuff. And there are white papers right. written about that if you really want to get into it. Uh, when, when you start reading papers for your Battle Snake is when you've reached the uh, upper echelons of nonsense. It didn't take long. Yeah. It really yeah. didn't take long. Um, <laughs> oh, we also have imperfect knowledge because of random food spawns. That's a very good point as well, Penelope. Ooh, that's a good call out as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's always an interesting one. Um, yeah, so then, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So as we go down into the game tree, basically it, it, it would take the game tree down to its particular depth if you have that set up. So you could say you only want to go, you know, five turns deep or something like that. Or you hit a terminal game state, which is usually either you lose or you win. Um, and then it comes back up the tree as you can see here and propagates those numbers back up until we get scores basically for, you know, this, this direction versus this direction. And then we pick the best one for us at that point. And the difference is it, with this one is it's picking the worst move for the opponent or sorry, sorry, the opponent is picking the worst move for you, and then you're picking the best move for you. You go back and forth, and that way you would, you determine that they are, like, trying to make the best move according to your algorithm right. that they can right, make. Right, right, um, right. Yeah. So then where alpha beta pruning comes in is, is basically the idea is that once you have a certain amount of knowledge, and then, this right. may be a terrible explanation, we will see, um, but once you have a certain <laughs> amount of knowledge in the game tree, there are certain, like, us, uh, parts of that tree, certain branches of that tree that you just don't actually need to explore once you've gotten right. to that point because you already have enough information. You know you're not going to make that move or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here you can see, you know, the, the, you know, the min here. Or, so we have the max. We're picking the max. And you can see here right. that we have. So you're picking min. So you know you can pick the five here, but we do not need to expand into the other to rest the other of the tree. tree. You can see it's cut yeah. off in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the idea and, is basically just to make a more performant min-max search so that right. you can yeah. um, so you can go deeper in your tree without uh, sacrificing performance. Right, right. And in our case, that's very important because uh, as Penelope, uh, the, a piece, a piece, a tidbit of knowledge that Penelope left us with um, after her implementation of min-max is that this snake currently only works on jewels. Uh, so that's 1v1 
because the tree is so big. So until we prune that tree, we can't, uh, you know, put it in a bigger game because the tree will be, because we're at 500 millisecond latency, we need more time to get through the trees. Yeah. So this is an important step. Um, so awesome. So um, I, I'm trying to visualize the code base in my head now and uh, I'm getting a migraine. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think everybody knows at this point we have uh, nonsense. Some JavaScript or some TypeScript uh, with some various things in there. Um, yeah. You know, we've got our uh, main game functions that is almost unreadable. Uh, look at that. There we go. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. So we've got, you know, your info function, your game start, uh, this Cartesian function here, uh, moves, all that. I think we also have our uh, yes. Here we go. All this good stuff. Our, the routing. Our route. This is this is the express. Old. I know this. I'm comfortable at this yeah, level. Yeah, of the right. code base. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's our wasm. Um, so yeah, if we want. So then I think, I think everything we're doing today is going to be in the uh, the go side of things since we're yep. dealing with the, the max right. function. Odd, odd wire in chat has just reminded <laughs> us. Um, oh, also, just uh, just so you know, uh, there's a logging bug currently. If you ever write go in this, you get one you get one print statement. You can print oh, once. I don't think I actually told I, you this, did I? <laughs> I saw a note about format.printf just breaking the integration, and I had meant to ask about that before we started. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, um, Pen yeah. Penelope once mean? again is saying, "Worked on my machine. Maybe yeah. it will work on your machine." <laughs> so, we'll yeah, it. it seems. I don't know if you've looked at how the WASM is being called, but there's some horrible hackery there about keeping the Go alive whilst the JS is running. But it seems, for Ooh. whatever reason, you get one print statement from Go before it gives up. Penelope is the only person who has been able to get more than one print statement out of the Go before it dies. We've had multiple attempts at this uh, from multiple people and no one can get it to print more than once. So debugging is a little tricky. <laughs> that may have been the, been the code base I kind of glossed over uh, when I was looking through things. Uh... <laughs> that was a, quite a crucial piece of information that I forgot to mention to you in our email, Fred. Um, <laughs> Yeah, okay, so funny. we get one print statement while print trying statement. to debug this. This is gonna be, it's gonna be, it makes it a lot more difficult. Um. <laughs> I actually think it's a really cool. fun constraint. I feel like it's kind right. of inspired. I want to do a show at some point where we literally just, not even on the code side, just like add stupid constraints. Like you can have one print statement or something. Like I think it'd just be really fun. I, that would get interesting. You have to find a way to print yeah. out like your entire program state in one statement. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, All right. Oh, and then I did want to call out, I added just a uh, little um, update to the build function. So it just builds the yes. Go and builds the TypeScript at the same time, um, just so we don't have to cool. throw multiple commands because I get lazy. Oh, I think uh, they yeah. also added the build script that she's probably going to shout about now that you've said that. So. Oh, it runs it. It runs the build script. Oh, it runs absolutely. it. Okay, cool. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, the, the, the Go build script we're talking about, right? There's another, is there another one? Uh, I'm sure we'll find out in chat very shortly. <laughs> I don't think yeah, there's, been, there's been so there's been so many build scripts um as i said last <laughs> well, as works, i said last chat I yeah yeah no, as, I, as i said last chat um every single guest has uh come in added their own build script and then the next guest hasn't used it and built their own so that's fine <laughs> <laughs> well then yeah i think we can hop into our um our min max at this point um, so this is the real min-max function, as to be composed with the fake min-max, uh, which right. I think is open <laughs> in one of these files. Here. Yeah. There's a fake min-max, which I think is, uh, my understanding, this is just setting up our state to actually right. call the main min-max function. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So we don't have to worry about that one too much. I think the majority of our logic is going to be happening within a uh, real min-max here. Um, Look at the quality of this documentation, Penelope. You, oh yeah, this is good. Unreal. We have tables yeah. in our comments. It's just ridiculous. We got all the good stuff here. Yeah, this is the uh, the payoff table here, which makes a lot of sense. Really simplifies um, handling that logic a little bit. Okay, so then we've got yeah our move, our looping through all of our moves here. So this is yeah going through our moves and our opponents, or going through our moves plus the product, our teacher product. Mm -hmm. of our opponent's moves. Still a little hazy on that one. I think I understand it. Uh, 
but yeah so and then uh yeah down here we've got this any any uh call outs you all have for you know this part of the code base that i should be aware of uh before this, i have in. no i think you've hit the important bits and also okay. uh the bits to the extent that i understand what's happening in this code base um i guess one bit that we uh one bit that we haven't mentioned yet that I don't even know is applicable at this point is, um, you know, where we're actually calculating, well, how we're actually calculating like the worst an opponent could do and the best we can do, which is of course the heuristic function, um, which is what Rob played with last time. So, you know, in the example we gave going with the Wikipedia page, you know, it's this very simple, like, hey, selecting score left or right, but obviously that was things a bit more complicated game. And so what that score actually, how that score actually happens um, is subjective and is i guess like you know even when even with everyone all of the top tier snakes you know using the same algorithm it all actually in the end comes down to how they score the game states and that's what this function is doing so um we changed how this worked a little bit last show so originally this was um left as uh it just had two checks if i remember which was like are you the longest snake set the score to high and uh are you dead set the score to zero um and we made it like a cumulative score rather than like a definite uh so like every time we meet a certain condition um some score gets added or retracted retracted subtracted um and that's kind of where it's at and i think it was in a place we had a weird bug at the end of the last show and i can't entirely remember what was happening but like it looked like it was performing better and then there was like one weird case we were running into where stuff wasn't working quite right so yeah, but yeah exactly i think that. it's fine yeah i feel like that's what happens with a lot of these a lot of time you're like okay it understands the game it does all this stuff and then it just decides to run to a wall one time you're like oh, I yeah i don't know why um <laughs> yeah 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 it was like a weird situation where it wasn't it was something we were trying it on hazards and i think if i remember correctly rob's theory was that the because we're doing it on hazards and the rule set that was in the code um initially wasn't hazards that at some point we were giving the wrong hazard damage value to the min max or to the snake and so the snake was making bad decisions because of that i think that was the final conclusion but i can't entirely remember I think um, I yeah. did that on my own snake too. I had right, that same right. issue where I was using like the yeah. wrong hazard damage, so it would just yeah. think it could do stuff it couldn't. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay, and Penelope's saying it wasn't right. simulating hazard posi hazard positions properly because it has the wrong seed. Okay, mm. that also makes sense. Um, rad. So yeah, this is yeah. something new to me too. Is using the uh, the rule set from Battle Snake. I had right. just like started messing around with this myself, and then I saw this in here, and it's like, ooh, yeah. glad other people yeah. are doing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this was the original thing that took us into GoLand. Okay. Corey wanted to use the rule set because it gets it makes so much stuff easier. Like we have no we have oh. no logic basically. Easier. Just, like, easier. easier. Yeah. So we replaced all of the work <laughs> of like actually writing logic with adding go into javascript um but yeah we just call we just tell the rule set to give us the next game state and everything's fine um yeah oh it's much easier than writing your own game simulator and oh, it's, uh, yeah. life a lot easier there penelope thinks using the rule set for competitions is actually a very bad idea that's fascinating why penelope i'm i'd love to hear more about that um but yeah where do we uh, start pruning yeah so I think what we're going to start pruning is uh, we may have to refactor a little bit. I we'll see how it goes as we move along sure. here, but mainly our um, we're going to be doing that somewhere in this area here because what we want to be able to do is um, you know not advance through basically this this loop here of right. our move options if we don't need to based on those alpha beta values. That makes sense. Um, so basically, what we'll be doing is I. Uh, my understanding um, here is we're probably going to want to take our score that we have here um, and do the comparisons here before we're um, basically, or probably, actually, we're going to be just doing them at the end. So okay. it's like after we've gotten our score, we're going to compare that to our alpha beta values, uh, right. and then we are going to either break out of this loop yep. or just let things continue as is. That now, the one thing um, we're going to have to figure out here, which I'm not 100% sure about, is how we're going to factor in the alpha value along with the beta value. So, like, the beta value is, you know, what we're comparing, like, our score against. Um, yeah. We come down. This will make it a lot easier to think about. So, like, There's the, some nice pseudo-code the, the adversarial score, basically, right? Like, their best versus our best. Is that the 
Right. So like, yeah, so like our score, we're saying if, you know, our the value score we get is uh, larger than or equal to the beta value, then we're good and we can move on. Um, and then we want, uh, but if not, we want to update our alpha value to be the max of either of those. And then basically the, if you're the minimizing player, you do the opposite where you're like, yeah, is the value less than alpha break? If not, we want to update the beta value and that's it. That's, um, Perfect. So that's just that part we're going to have to figure out is, you know, how we're going to loop through the payoff table to get the right information there. Yeah. Cool. I think a lot of that is going to be based on uh, what we're doing here to do this. So first things to do would just be to get our um, alpha and beta values into our function. Uh, welcome, Hugh. Thanks for joining us in the chat. Hugh said, to be fair, uh, he thinks we've replaced the complexity of writing the rule set with the complexity of switching programmers every two hours of development. You're not wrong. That's <laughs> yeah, very much the aim. <laughs> I still, me and Hugh a long time ago were joking about like, it, I think it was for Battlesnake, but also I just want to do this for something in general, doing like a full-on corporate development cycle show where we turn up in suits and ties and we uh, have an agile coach shouting at us and we have to file a ticket before we can add any feature and just like doing the whole shebang on sh like to build a really simple app and like just going full-on parody that. office. Start with, um, you know, like a planning kickoff meeting, you know, plan yeah, out your sprints. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know those kind of like sprints be like short um yeah yeah <laughs> those kind of like shows which are like parodies of our jobs and lives like yeah, silicon yeah. valley or mythic yeah. quest we could yeah. have one that's entirely around building a winning snake yeah yeah exactly retrospectives and story points every show um alec we do have our right. our first co-piloting from penelope uh, i had told right. alec that Previous snake owners are very graceful with coming into chat and giving a hand, which Penelope is doing today. Thank you very much. Um, you probably want floats for your alpha and beta values. That's a good call out. That would make sense. Yeah, I have to excuse me on some of these. Definitely asking for any kind of help there because I normally work in TypeScript. And, no, and you also we just totally do it fine. numbers. Yeah. Uh, and also, <laughs> like, you know, there are three of us on screen and uh, only one of those people is useful. So um, if chat can fill in the blank, the service that me and Kevin are not providing, that is very, very uh, welcome. Okay, so that gives us a starting point for our alpha beta values. They're now being passed around. Okay, so... If we're going through our loop, so that means we're going to be, um, say we're starting at the very top here. So this is what's being passed in. Then we have our game states that are being created uh, up here in the build possible moves. Um, so that would be game state, you know, one, two, ooh, one, two, and three. Um, and then that's what we'll be looping over um, down, down here. And uh, Penelope, can I correct me if I'm totally wrong on any <laughs> of that stuff? Uh, that is my understanding so far. Uh, yeah, so then we're looping through those. Um, and basically, we're going to need to decide, um, yeah, whether uh, we're going to need to do this, this check, which is what we're doing here. And we basically want to know for the maximizing player's score, is that going to be yeah, larger or equal to the beta value? And we want to break in that case. And then for the minimizing player score, we want to know um, if that is uh, less than or equal to the alpha score. And so, and then to just make that make a little more sense from the start, the initial values that you would normally go for for alpha and beta are going to be uh, negative infinity for alpha and positive infinity for uh, beta. Okay, cool. Um, welcome, Corey. Welcome, Defines. Thank you for joining us. Um, that will make sense so far. Um, I am having crushing second year computer science flashbacks. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find that code. So I might, might be able to understand what's happening. Yeah, I don't even know if I did uh, min-max in college at all. They were more on pathfinding so algorithms, I feel like. So Joe, you're saying you're gonna look at your second year comp sci code and that's second year Haskell help... comp sci code. Yes. And oh, that's no. gonna help you um, understand what's happening here? Rather so the reason I think it will help the, the reason I think it will help me understand is because a it's a programming language I read and b it was for uh, drafts or checkers or chess one of the it was a simpler game so it was classic min max and classic alpha beta rather than like this weirdness so I think I'll be able to follow it but anyway um, Penelope's never actually implemented alpha beta pruning 
What does your snake do then? Oh yeah, and uh, have you? You said you had an Eva, Alec. What does your snake? What does your snake run on in the wild? Oh, mine. Mine is Alpha Beta. Oh, cool. It's just not a very good implementation of Alpha Beta. Uh, it's more what it is. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it does use Alpha Beta pruning min max, um, just with the heuristic stuff, and it did all right. Um, but it was definitely slower than it needed to right. be. Also, right, right. recursion in JavaScript is rough, uh, so I realized I needed to move on from that. <laughs> Oh yeah, Monte Carlo tree search, of course, plan B. Yeah, sorry. Um, right. That's what I'm t attempting next. I want to learn how oh, to do nice. that. Yeah, very popular. Okay, so I'm just gonna get these in here, um, just to. I, I'm not sure this would be correct to start. So, yeah, if our score is gonna be greater than beta, we want to cut off there, um, and then we also want to. Um, so the, the the confusing part here is that we are basically kind of always the maximizing player with the way mm -hmm. this works versus like doing that back and forth that you would normally do for turns. So that's why I'm just having a little a little bit of confusion as to um, you know how this is gonna fit in. So I'm right. just gonna keep taking a look at this. So we're going to want. Um, as your resident, trying. like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Kim. As your resident person who didn't do comp sci, um, would this not make it easier though? Like, it's not classic min max, although I keep seeing it called mini max, but anyway, min max. Um, <laughs> um, but is it not in theory more simple because you're just looking at, oh no, because you're not just looking at yourself, are you? You're also having to consider the actions of every other snake where most yeah. of the game, where mini, min max, mini max to be a two player arrangement, right? The classic, got it. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, yeah, it's like, because there you only have to think about like, okay, I'm in this spot. What do I do? This is more like for this game state, what do I do kind of thing. Um, for like everything at once, so it gets a little more interesting there. Okay, so if we're looking at, um, okay, so if our score, so our current score is going to be, going to be compared to the beta. Now we're gonna want to compare our opponent's scores, uh, or at least our, um, yeah, our opponent's scores, or our version of the opponent's scores, which is just taking the min of. Um, the scores that we have because we don't actually have the perspective yeah. of the opponent um and then we're going to want to compare that to our alpha now the ordering will definitely matter here uh, okay so yeah let's get into this Oh, Corey's doing MCTS for the first time on stream. Started last week and doing that again on Sunday. Excellent. What time on Sunday, Corey? Noon EST. Excellent. <laughs> Goldsmiths represent in the chat. We love our Goldsmiths folks. We were talking about Goldsmiths today, Kevin. Where were we? Not you and me, me and he. Oh, got it. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't remember that. Um, um, Alec, you asked why is recursion particularly gnarly in JavaScript compared to other languages? So this is something that I can't speak to with a ton of um, uh, sure. experience, uh, I would say. But uh, my understanding is that in JavaScript, recursion uh, just the way the language implements recursion um, is incredibly performance intensive. So basically, it handles recursion fine. It's just that it will be slower, slow. so much slower. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hugh did mention tail call optimization um, in his comment, which, um, which is usually the can usually the the reason that happens. Um, but I'm my understanding is it doesn't have that. Or, sorry, or it Might does, but it's still not fast. It's somewhere in that area. Yeah. All I know is with JavaScript, it's generally best to avoid it if you have anything that needs to be performant. Yeah. 
All right. So, okay. So if our uh, alpha score is greater than our beta score, we're going to want to Five break, right? Expanded. And then we're going to want to update our alpha score, uh, which will now just be... Um, Da, 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 da. So then, yeah, so then <laughs> alpha would then be, it would just be, if, uh, we are straight up converting Wikipedia algorithms to go right now, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Mm. Anyone else in chat working on any fun snake related? We've got Summer League coming up. What are we got new new snake iterations coming out for the Summer League? I might actually finally enter a snake in the Summer League. Not not this one. Not this one. Well, we we will be entering this one, but yeah, I won't be taking uh, credit for this one. Oh, is it going to compete? Possibly. Um, I don't know if we compete in Summer League. We'll throw it, throw it into whatever the global arena looks like at the time, probably at least. Nice, um, nice. Um, yeah, got to get it out there. Um, <laughs> you says nobody's beat his Battlesnake speedrun record and the world record holder. Um, we'll make Battlesnake speedrunning a thing. Um, we'll, what do you we'll speedrun? He speedran having like blank project through to getting the first battle snake deployed and getting it getting it into a yeah. game um that was the it was it any percent you did hugh any percent speed run um and yeah it was like fastest snake initialization um cool cool okay so i, I think what we're gonna need is we're gonna need to get the worst score for a uh, particular move um so like Based on my particular move, what's the yeah, what's the worst move an opponent can make? Or well, yeah, we're just gonna need to get that worst score. Yeah. So I'm just gonna copy and paste some of this code over here. Um, while we're looping through our payoff table. Hugh says the speed run was a publicity stunt, of course, for Hugh's very excellent type uh, battle snake typescript types, which you should all go check out because they're very excellent Ooh. and it's a very nice little framework that Hugh has built. Yeah. Um, JLFET's taking a break, so it doesn't burn out. Um, can't decide what language. What is Battle Snake Arena defines? Yeah, I've never heard about this before. <laughs> excuse, excuse us while we all Google. want to do actually uh... unrelated Battlesnake is an enemy from Final Fantasy X2 oh, it's also a metal band which comes up every time <laughs> yeah there's uh they're very active on Twitter and so if you search Battlesnake on Twitter you get Battlesnake play Battlesnake or you love get it. this metal band <laughs> love it oh the nerds again I can just hear it now oh it's the nerds again <laughs> They, they don't mean to be tagging us. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get you. Okay, let's see if I understand what's happening. Okay, so we're grabbing our worst score. Oops. Okay, so at this point, um, we know what our worst score is uh, mm -hmm. for a particular move. So if we're going left, we can look at, yeah, so just the, the worst possible score for going left, which would then be the, like that min's decision for um, that left move or whatever we're doing. Uh, so if we're in here, um, so we've got our worst score now. So then the worst score we're going to want to compare to our, um, alpha value. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure we want this right here. We're going to have to think about this, uh, <laughs> as we go. Uh, okay. but yeah, that should get us close to it. So we could say if our, um, yeah, our worst score is less than or equal to our alpha value. 
then we're going to want to get out of here. Because basically, uh, yeah, nothing else is worth considering at this point. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to, if there's a change there, score wise, if the worst score is our I'm... alpha value, uh, sorry, our beta value. I'm trying to think how we're going to know if any of this is even working and having <laughs> nightmares about that. Well, usually I do a lot of print statements. Yeah, to figure that out. <laughs> but I mean, we can still uh, do lots, just one at a time. Got do it one, right. Got do it once, it. run the code. Do it once, run the code. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll we'll figure this out. We'll figure that out yeah. uh, when we get there. You know, here I am still adding uh, semicolons in here. So if the worst score is less than the beta, we are going to want to update beta to be the worst score. Got you. Cool, cool. Okay, so um, Corey, that is controversial. Penelope decided the one print line thing wasn't true, uh, but Penelope and is, is the, the only, only one. Yeah, the only one who yeah. can do more. more than one. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Penelope is totally punking us? Yeah, but Rob, Rob <laughs> couldn't replicate Penelope's results. Rob could only get it to do one as well. Um, so it's it's a strong works on her machine vibe. So funny. <laughs> like everyone is building the same code. <laughs> like, and yeah. Don't know. All right, just looking over this. So if we're coming okay. in say something like this here um, comparing it to our diagram uh we're we're coming in at our max level here we then create right. the three sets of moves that we could do so that's you know left up or right maybe um and yeah. then also combine those with our opponent's moves um then we look so that's so there's actually say your say our opponent only has two moves there's actually six branches from this top state here Jesus, okay the yeah Cartesian. it starts to get yeah it starts to get hard to think about very quickly um yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then so we could say maybe yeah it's like there's less moves but um so then we would come in we would look at this one this would go off and do that it would then compare the rest uh, we would come back up here get our score from the uh this next uh layer down or yeah, yeah depth so we get that score we then update the payoff table with that score um, and then we decide whether we need to move on um, so we say uh, if yeah so if our score at this point is greater than or equal to our beta value um, which is going to start off at infinity uh, we want to break so we're not going to break um, if the score is greater than the alpha value um, it, which it probably isn't at this point but the state's three um, we are going to update that so uh, we will not be updating that so then we're going to take the worst score um, from our current row in the table uh, so that yeah so we're going to get the worst score in the table take that um if that is less than or equal to the alpha which starts off at negative infinity mm -hmm. um we're gonna break because we don't need to compare anymore because this is just so insanely bad we can just move on yeah. um <laughs> and then okay so then it's the and then it's the worst score is less than beta we're going to um, just update that beta value so that you know down the tree as we go uh we should be good there now okay so Naively, this feels like it might work. Uh, that you explained it like it works, right? I do that a lot, though. We'll see. If it actually <laughs> works. Oh. <laughs> I think I just like convince myself that it works this yeah. way. In my head. Compilers, yeah, compilers can definitely smell your fear. So that's just, yeah, really. Um, <laughs> so I think we could, you know, maybe give this a try. Um, yeah. So what were you usually doing to test these in the past? Do we just want to do um, some challenges or toss them in a yeah, game? Yeah, we will. I mean, I think, yeah, it's thrown into a game to start with, which I guess you're going to engrock it? Yeah. yeah, I can engrock it. That works. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's just right. make sure it uh, actually looks like builds. it's running a game. Yeah, builds and, like, moves <laughs> would be nice. Response to requests. Um, 
and then yeah challenges uh we were doing challenges way back when um though actually that's a good point because the last time the challenge we got stuck on with gary was the one with four snakes that are just going in a loop um and that's probably too many snakes so maybe we'll just have to put it in a jewel with another snake um mm -hmm. until the, presumably once the alpha beta pruning starts working we'll be able to do more snakes but i would yeah be actually i guess i guess that's can, our test honestly. okay really you know if we're gonna i didn't know I, I never noticed a big enough performance improvement from alpha beta that it like got oh. me to the point of like because like i having a manageable having tree yeah, with this, with my tree, I ended up having yeah. to basically select the closest snake to me and right. only compare only me them. to that snake. Yeah, don't even simulate the other snakes. That's what I had to do to make okay. my performant enough to yeah. actually do, like, play a four-person game. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I need to go update where we call this um, so that it has no nope, wrong one again. This one? Yes. Um, someone asked where the code was, just a reminder folks, if you want to see the code in the current state of the repository in this Jonash, github.com forward slash Jonash forward slash coding badly relay. Um, the readme contains uh, a full table of everyone who's taken apart, uh, taken part and their latest, their last commit when they PR'd. And then uh, the readme is also littered with the notes left by every dev uh, for the next dev. Um, with increasing levels of in incomprehensibility. Hugh says it's got it running smoothly. It was extremely smooth. Of course it was extremely smooth because no fewer than three guests have touched the build scripts. And I should probably import math. Of course. All right. <laughs> In What's this project with Wasm. I mean, it's been, you know, lots of people have dealt with the WASM being hard to build Build now. We had an entire, the whole second episode was just dealing with that. It's moving. The WASM project is very, very good. Corey set us on a good good path. Corey set us on a good path with this. Um, what What is this? What are we doing? Oh, we're trying to get to compile now. Yeah, the oh, okay. Um, Penelope yeah, did say something to... earlier about your build script. I believe she said you want script forward slash server is the script that you want. Oh, that's a totally different one than I was looking at. Okie dokie. Let me just... Uh... Oh, it also, it's failing on... Uh, it's just failing on the fact that I added arguments to the oh, min-max function. So I'm just going through and getting those added in. Yeah. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Get test updated. All right, what are we calling this thing? Let me see what was last said. Is that the only call to real min max in here? Yeah, script server is the um is the one one script to run them all. Oh cool. Okay. Let's uh Oh perfect. Love it. So we do a dot down script uh, server. script singular uh yes oh and it's a float 32 and i need a float 64 classic ah excellent bitten by float types kevin when are you going to fill it's your fun. bottom shelf i'm in the bottom shelf so if i could yeah, fill like, I've there's got, still there's still, there's still gaps here. around you I've got, yeah, i mean often i'm a bit closer yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, yeah, I, I thought about doing it, but like that's this is this is the me space. <laughs> it's good real estate. Yeah, like I've got you know a whole cabinet of board games and figures and and stuff here that could yeah. go behind me, but yeah, I'm not sure. I got some uh, got some new games in the post recently. Mm -hmm. I'm a board game fan. Yeah. So, yeah. When's the Battle Snake board game happening, Brad? Brad, where's our Battlesnake board game Kickstarter? Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? There are lots of games I know that have like simultaneous player moves. So like you all select a move and you all show mm. it at the same time and then you execute on them. So I reckon it would be one like that. 
would you, Mr. Board Game Nerd, if you were building a Battlesnake board game, literally just do, like, Battlesnake on paper, or would you... There must be some fun thing you could do where it's like, you have mechanics that represent yeah. the snake in some silly way, that would be fun. Yeah, I feel like at the very least, like, there's a game I have called Suro, or mm. a few variants of it, um, and you place down tiles, and you kind of, it's kind of hard to explain, but you, you move your piece along the line, and the the little card you put down has a set of lines you rotate it right it right right right, right. Yeah. Um, but but if someone else is in the space where putting the tile down would continue their line they move too i feel like you know you have a hand full of battle snake moves you can make yeah 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 that'd be there's maybe something there oh that looks like it's running yeah i think i wrote the tests maybe uh, but uh, it is running uh, okay it appears to have a server up though uh, best move is not as expected and panic tests failed. I guess mm. best move not being as expected is expected if the best moves are not aware yeah, we could... that alpha that the tree analysis is gonna be different. Yeah, let's uh we're gonna need some of these. Uh... Uh, yeah, let's uh, maybe just take a quick look at that test. Um, which Okay, is there just one test in here? It looks like it. Um, test. So it's just got a big game state and it's checking that the test is what it, uh, the move is what it thinks it is. Mm. So, I mean, that's, that's not bad news. Like, the thing that's yeah, breaking so we... is that a different move is being selected, and that could be very good, or it could mean we've broken it all. I think we have to just run the game. I agree, yeah. Let's see, graphics. Uh... I can't remember what port this runs on. Um, 80... Oh, right, yeah, I gotta yeah. give it the port too. Yeah, I think uh... it's um, it was something like 18... Oh, wait, oh. Uh, 18, it says right there. It said one uh, one eight one zero zero. It was it was in the terminal somewhere up the terminal. Oh yeah, it was. I think it's right here. Yeah, one eight zero eight zero. My apologies. There we go. Nice. That is totally readable. Um, we're gonna just keep that screen off the main thing there. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, <laughs> Head on over to Battlesnake. Alpha Beta shouldn't change the result of the min-max. Um, lots of things shouldn't do things, Corey. That is uh, not how this game, not how this show typically works. Nope. Uh, let me just oh, sign in. Do you want me to drop quick? your screen for a moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you would. That would be fantastic. Oh. Hello, Thank everyone. You. We're big now. <laughs> you made me think I should put stuff on the. Shelf. It's very empty. It looks like you only just moved in, Kevin. Don't do this. <laughs> Alright, we're on it. We're on it. Okay. We're on it. We're gonna fill it live. Did, did, does the chat get to like help you pick items? Yeah, so you know, I'll see Can I make a poll? Right? Can I do a Twitch <laughs> poll? A oh books. CSS yeah. Secrets, that's a good book. Yeah, it's a lovely book. Uh you know, you want a sim you want you want some symmetry there, you know? Some developer of avocados, yeah, okay. Mary Fengvall's book. I feel like right. Let's, let's see how we're doing. Yeah, that's better. But now welcome, I may welcome as well to Cribs feel it. with Kevin Lewis. All right. So what 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 else have I got? Because again, they need. To be <laughs> Let me know when you're on your screen back. By the way, Alec. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really. Almost there. Um. He said, "How about a big LED matrix?" People can write messages on. He might have trouble producing that spontaneously. What is that one on the left? What is that book? That this looks fun. How to run a government so that citizens benefit and taxpayers don't go crazy. Very nice, very nice. Very aspirational. Uh, and then... Hang on. Done. What do you think? Perfect. What is, so what's the one on the left? It looks like it's this one. Apocalypse. Yeah. This is the Ladybug Book of the Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> Okay. You know, you know they, you know they did like the adult yeah, ones, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I know because you said I think you and Amy bought me the uh, the Ladybird book of like the hipster or something. That actually a hundred percent tracks. We also <laughs> have the Ladybird book of the baby somewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. Corey think... says, love the symmetry. It's nice. Thank you. I think that might be good, you know. Yeah. Um, what, what might I swap out? I've got a Haskell book here, by the way. Which one is that? I've got Learn You a Haskell for Great Good. Oh, no, don't put that on there. Okay. What about... homophobic, homophobic and fatphobic book, that one. We keep that in the cupboard of shame. Is it? I mean, I've never read it. Is it... Uh... There's uh, the output of some of the exercises uh, randomly veers into terrible territory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Um, anyway, Alec, how, are you, is your screen need to come back? I am, I think, ready, yes. Cool. Bring it back. All right. Um, oh, it looks really, it actually looks really, with that, with the Get Together book, it looks really good, Kevin. Yeah. Um, there we yeah, go. there we go. Look at that. Perfect. Um, and the, 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 the increasing size. Excellent job. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Cool. So, have you have you seen this run already, Alex? Do you know this works? Or is this no, this is. Uh, I, okay. I, I ran one game this morning just to test okay. it out, make sure I actually had it running. Um, it did decide to drive itself into a wall, sadly, um, but it did well up until. That oh, point. I wonder if it yeah. still thinks it's in. Um, did you change the rule set? It might still think it's in wrapped mode. Hmm. I think I had it running on a standard one. Yeah, that might have been it. But you, does it does uh, it default to wrapped? Should I should I know that? Uh, let me. I think in the code we actually had to specify check. which game yeah. it was running on. But maybe I'm okay, maybe I'm uh, not at all thinking correctly about how this works. Uh, let me double check. It might have. It actually. Now that I've said this, I. I think Rob would have made it detect if it was wrapped. Yes, it okay, yeah, ignore me entirely. Rob is checking for the wrapped okay. set in the request. Yep, I'm being Consider busy. yourself ignored. Please do. Yeah. Yeah, this run is see what happens. Yeah, let's, let's hit start. Let's hit start. Okay, so we'll see yeah, we'll see what happens here. I just ran against my snake. Whoa, um, that's a lot of unhappy uh, things. All right. So um I'm gonna say I broke it. It does look like it it broke it. <laughs> Cool. That's All a right. lot of uh, go unhappiness, and it just went up the entire time, right? It looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it just ran. Yeah, it just yeah. Ran and it. Uh, and th these are all these are all oh, repeated yeah. errors. Go program yeah. already mm -hmm. exited. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what we're looking for the first time the error occurs. Let's check out this one. Hmm, no, it started with go program has mm. already exited. Interesting. So then am I having an issue with um, the fact that these tests aren't passing here? I wonder, maybe it's not, but it does say while I'm loaded here. Oops. All right. Yeah, let me just try. Because I'm, I'm wondering if it's just that they like because the test failed, it didn't load up the Go stuff. So I'm thinking mm, maybe mm. we can just do yeah, that's very possible. Uh, and yeah, it is. Um, as Corey said, it shouldn't. It is concerning if Corey is correct, which I have no reason to doubt he is. Um, that alphabet pruning shouldn't change the result min max. So we are apparently doing that. Do we actually? Did the test tell us that's a good what point. move it um, gave? Mm -hmm. Did the test say what move we gave? If it's expecting yeah, that? looks. Let's, uh, let's run those directly. What is it? Um, did it just go test? It did not. Um, I will just run the script again. Uh, let's see what it says. Uh, okay. okay, so what it tells me is that... Um, Best go about your own, best move is not as affected up. Oh, so it looks like it's returning up. Oh, okay. And then panic test failed. So, okay. So that looks like that might be our problem there. Um, so what should, what should the test, what does, what should it be returning? Yeah, let's find that out. All right. Mm -hmm. um, blah, blah. So this is just deep equal the down, possible move down but, right oh yeah okay up is the only the left. move that's removed i think so in that yeah, reflect well, deep equal oh wait maybe i'm not reading that correctly never mind because i think this is the only this is the only test that calls real min max right here right oh yeah i see best move is not equal to right okay mm -hmm. 
So best move does not equal right. Okay, donkey. Um, cool. So sounds like overall we have totally screwed up the output here. So let's maybe try to get um, a little bit of print statement. Is it returning there? moves at all? Yeah, that's pretty a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no, returning hang on. It's returning up. It's returning up. Right. It is returning up. Yeah, yeah it's getting up back. Um, <laughs> love the does the uh, name of the snake um, in here. <laughs> Um, great point, Jay mm -hmm. Lafette, who says, um, I think it could change the result if the search was able to go deeper. So, uh, yeah, if the, if the oh. depth... Was the depth on this snake hard-coded to a certain depth, or was it set on, uh, like, detecting if we were going to run out of time, and then it would exit what depth it was at? Whichever one of yeah. those it is. Um, it's got a hard-coded depth, so I think... A hard-coded depth, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it shouldn't change there, the result. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, then, uh, yeah, I think some, um, we're going to need a little bit of printing to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Yeah, it will be a little bit of printing indeed. Exactly once, <laughs> in fact. Exactly only once, right, yes. Um, okay, so so what? So just to get an idea of what that error is, like if I put more than one print statement in here, it's just going to fail the bill. You're literally, yeah, you'll literally just get the one. So after the first print statement, uh, it won't do another gotcha so i, can put I can't remember exactly what happens. Happens. only print the first one got it okay. yeah exactly yeah yeah just the go program <laughs> exits after the first one or something like that and it, it is it just print f's or is it all prints so penelope thinks it's just one of them i think it was just print f and then she thought okay. print line we worked work but i mean you can try it so as i said like rob couldn't replicate that for Corey, mm -hmm. it's only been one um but maybe you also have a identical setup to Penelope and that you the print line let me actually see if Penelope left a note on that um yeah let's so then okay so, um, okay so it's tough. it's print line that breaks the connection so print f in theory if Penelope's theory holds for you you should be able to do multiple print f's That's just to get us an idea of what's going on here. Oh. Put one of these here. Um, then here we want to do. Um, greater than alpha this and then we can if I remember correctly just do so scroll alpha like that. Uh, right. Yeah so yes. I never never quite remember the syntax for that. Uh, yeah it's not mad about it so we'll take it. Uh, so then we have uh yeah beta screen let's just do this so we just have some idea what's going on here, and then this will be. Um... Yeah. All right. Well, let's um... see if we get any more information here. That would be my bad. Oops. I need to stop going to that screen. It's just... That's very orange. <laughs> it is. Um, I just need to change these to print floats. Uh... Okay, cool. Excuse my clacky, clacky keyboard for a minute. All right, so we got a little bit of info. It looks like I did get multiple print statements. Um, from probably at a uh, backslash are, end of the end you there. Are blessed. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like I got yeah. So zero uh, greater than alpha at negative infinity. Um, then a beta prune, which would have been oh, this way. I want to go this way. Uh, um, yeah, and then that would have been, and then we got a beta prune. Um, 
which would have meant right after that that the worst score being whatever the worst score is on here um, is less than or equal to alpha, and alpha does start off as um, uh, I always have to like re re like okay this one starts off as negative alpha starts off as negative infinity yeah, yeah, yeah. I always have to recheck that uh, yeah so that would make sense to prune. Um, Although this might be one of our issues here is that because we're looking at scores from no, because we're still looking at scores from the like the main player's perspective, so this should be fine. Um, let's take a closer look at what's going on here. I am actually just going to add some backslash ends in here so that we these are a little more readable. Um, Oh, we've entered the chill part of the playlist. Why like have it. we done that? That oh no. Oh I, no. <laughs> so right I, to sleep. Uh, I muted my mic because I started yawning and while I can yawn and visibly not show it like an internal one, I do make a noise. <laughs> we unfortunately always, look yeah. like the typical thing happened where Spotify randomly decided that I didn't want my old playlist on repeat. And so we may have gone out of royalty free land. Sorry, Chris. Um, alpha greater than negative infinity. Um, that's maybe it's not as expected. Um, yeah, let's do did it again. Um, readable thing ever. Um, yeah. We can hope, you. We can hope. The robot ears are very competent, though. Sorry, the other one? Sorry, I was talking to chat about the, the fact we just did a piracy. Mm. Oh, yes, the classic. The record labels are going to bust through my window any, any minute now. So I'm thinking what's happening. I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure yet. Um, okay. Because we have some scores coming in here. Um, you know, we've got the up, which is um, mapped there uh, to zero. The scores look very but suspicious are, to me. I agree. Um, I don't think we should be beta pruning this much right at the start. Right. I also um, think it's very I'm, weird that the scores are both ex are extremes. Like... I know our heuristic's not that complicated, but like, I don't know how we're producing a zero score, actually. Mm, that is most likely just the initial value given to that. Got we you. may be evaluating okay. it too early, which is my, okay, what I might see. be happening here. I see. Yeah, because I think that's the initial value given to a float. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Like, a D, like when you initialize it, I think. Mm. Not 100% sure about that one. Um, but like here, here we're getting a... A losing state, an actual right. value here yeah. which like a negative one sounds like yeah losing state exactly that sounds a bit better um which is greater than than the alpha of negative infinity so like this one makes sense um i'm not so sure about what we're getting on these other two here um so yeah let's get um back into that um notch off the big one there for the payoff table let's just um, do that and then sorry that that slurp of tea was probably a bit too close to the mic got a little bit james hoffman on everyone there yeah <laughs> <laughs> The ES module's migration continues to be a big sad. Yeah, I 
don't know anything about this or why it's happening or the ins and outs of it happening. All I do know is that every other project I do in JavaScript now, I have to import stuff in a different way. Otherwise things break. Um, and I just do that, not knowing what I'm doing. You must run into this fairly often, Kevin. You do JavaScript stuff. I, I do JavaScript quite often, but it's often quite simple things. Or like with a pretty standard setup because mostly what I build for my day job are like small projects for education rather right. than big behemoths. Yeah. Um, sense. So yeah, at, no, not often actually. Which is great because, you know, I can write code that lands me as a co-host on Coding Badly for my day job. Perfect. Okay, um, so... How we doing? I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm looking digging a little bit into this. So we're looking at, um, we've got our payoff tables here. Uh, mm -hmm. and I got them printed out a little more readably here. Um, but we're beta pruning a lot. And I, I don't think that is correct. I'm not 100 Sorry, I keep going to that screen. I told me to. Uh, <laughs> good old Ingrack. And da da da. da. So, so we're continuously hitting the point where our score is greater than or equal to our beta. Which should be plus infinity. It should be positive infinity. Initially. Oh, I also didn't update this. I have an odd feeling we're actually seeing alpha burning. Um, that might actually be able to survive. Just incorrect information. Um, yeah, so, okay, burning, yeah, cool. There we go. Cool, okay. That makes more sense. Okay, so we've got, yeah, they're all alpha prunes. Okay, um, so if we're pruning down here and the alpha prune, the alpha, you know, is going to be um, negative infinity. Mm -hmm. Right? We are passing in there. Let's make sure we're passing in negative infinity. Yes, we are. Yep, alpha beta, cool, all right. We're good. Um, so yeah, so then we're checking. Yeah, so we're checking here. So we're getting this prune looks to be on pretty much um, every loop through. We're hitting a, a prune here, which would definitely decrease like the number of trees that we're touching, you know, or the number of yeah, leaves, branches of the tree. That's the word. Uh, so that is probably what's going on here. Um, so we've got our worst score being less than or equal to our alpha score, which is negative infinity to start. Um, yeah. Of course, our alpha can be updated here, um, which I think we did see happening. Wait. Yes, we so. Mm. Oh, sorry, the alpha, never mind, you know me. Alpha's being updated in the top loop. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so, our, yeah, so if our score is greater than alpha, and alpha is starting as negative infinity, um, yeah, so we'll see if we get this um, update here. So like zero is greater then alpha and negative alpha. infinity, right? Um, but then why does alpha prune happen there still? Right, so then an immediate alpha prune happens. Um, so that means we go in here, we get the worst possible score being probably zero infinity. at this point. Um, yeah, how is that less than negative infinity then if we... Yeah, we printed let's... score, score was zero. Yeah, so... If Score is zero. Why would that be considered less can we, than can or equal we, can to? Can we print the worst score and alpha value? Ah, that? okay. Ah, uh, the reason that's happening. Okay, okay, I see it. I see it. So the reason that's happening is, yeah, what we're doing is we're immediately setting alpha to zero right here. I see. And then, so then it's like, oh, the worst score is zero. That's equal to the. Right. Alpha, so then we prune in that situation. And I, I think we do want to prune in that situation. I'm just not sure we want to be hitting that right now. Um, right. So I'm looking at that here. So in that case, if we know our first score is zero, um, then we want to... We do want this update because if we're coming into something like this over here on our right hand side, if we know we Hold have, if we get zero back here um, from our our min max function um, or alpha beta, bleh, um, I don't think we, then we do want to go. be doing that right there. Yeah, you might be right. So looking at the spot. looking at the Wikipedia pseudocode, 
these mm. two things are in in an if else. So that worse. Wait, hang on. Am I reading this correctly? I might not be. Yeah, that's that's the that's the whole minimizing and maximizing player portion of okay. it, which is something that this algorithm doesn't do. Right. You know, it focuses. It, it it looks at getting you know the least, yeah, the lowest score for you based on your opponent's moves, but it right. doesn't quite have that like back and yeah. forth model. Right. Um, I think that's like that's where my brain's still having yeah, some yeah, uh, yeah. trouble yeah. making that leap there. It, it does feel like we need to have some way to either be doing the score or the worst score but doing the worst score immediately on the same loop through using the information we just from the just yeah. run best score seems like it's not meant to happen right it's a little less useful then because like what we really just want to know is you know for a particular state of the board so if we're going or like we were looping we have three options right. we really just want to know if um if this score that we got is we need to know if the score we just got is less than the current worst score basically right mm -hmm. so if we have a the worst score for a particular move yeah if we get if we check another move and that worst score is worse then the opponent's going to want to go in that direction so I'm wondering if we really even need this um, extra value because really, you know, all we're really caring about is for the worst score here mm -hmm. is the worst score less than infinity. Right. If it is, um, we don't we don't need to keep going down that track at all. Um mm -hmm right yeah so we, then we can keep then we yeah we don't need to keep going down there so we're good on that and then if the worst score is less than our beta value we might do we not do we we might not need to even update that anymore is kind of what i'm thinking here right i see okay so we've got yeah our worst score for a particular move we really just want to compare that against our like yeah, if, we're, if we've got the worst score for a curtain set of moves, we want to basically compare that to our, you know, current best score and just say, yeah, like, is this less than we want to use that score instead? Um, which we do a bit of down here when we actually select which move to do. However, we want to do a lot, like, basically some similar, we want to do that up in the actual recursion so that we aren't um, going farther down into our tree here. Right. So what I'm thinking is um, if we just take um, our alpha score. Okay, so yes. So if our current score is greater than or equal to beta. Um, we can start bringing a whiteboard to coding badly. I know, right? I feel like I need one almost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're okay. Ignore. I'm going to ignore this for a second. This bit here, and just focus on our worst score. So, if we're getting the basically the worst possible score, that is like the that would be considered the like opponents, um, or like that would be considered the yeah the, the best score based on um, our moves that we could have. Okay, so in that okay. situation, we have our worst score. We know it's less than our, if we know it's less than our alpha value, um, we do not need to continue to look down that tree of moves because that's probably, that's going to be the worst one we're going to encounter. Sure. So this part still makes sense here. Um, if then that worst score is less than the beta value, um, yeah, we do want the beta value to become that worst score. What I'm kind of thinking is, um, is maybe we don't want to be updating this here. So if, if we're saying our current score is greater than or equal to beta, so it's like a crazy high score, then we do want to break mm -hmm. out as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of thinking we don't want to be updating here because if our score is greater than the alpha yeah. value, then we want to go 
We don't. Yeah, we don't. Oh, I'm also pretty sure I have this wrong. <laughs> that's what that's supposed to yeah. be. Yeah, and also, uh, it's also, hmm. yeah, no, hang on, that makes sense. Uh, but I'm kind of wondering if we even need this here. Also, actually, is this correct? So you're comparing, you're doing, if the, sorry, I'm looking at the, the pseudocode on the right. So you're doing mm. the score is greater than alpha. There should be score greater than beta here, right? Oh, that's one above. So this is in the so pseudocode. Sorry, is this where we... Mm -hmm. um, this might Speaking be the right. back and forth thing. So that's if value is greater than beta, then assign alpha. Whereas we're doing... In value greater than beta, we're breaking. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. Am I misreading the indentation on the pseudocode? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sorry. That yeah, like isn't, this that, that doesn't right have a comparison. Is, is this bit right here? Right, yes. got you. That's the max. Okay, yes. I understand. Sorry, I got messed up by. Pseudo oh no, it gets me every time I every time yeah. I look over. I'm like, wait a second. So I, I feel like pseudo code is meant to have less syntax than normal code. That seems to actually have more. <laughs> <laughs> I do just want to see what we get now that we're properly setting that alpha value. Um, Are we still getting up? uh still failing tests yeah still getting still up. going up still going up yeah okay. are, have we are we getting different pruning oh no it's from here so we're pruning um no it looks like we're getting the exact same output there did you save i did yeah because oh, i wait, think what's you... happening oh, you just ran the build yeah yeah, yeah. oh yes yeah i ran the the, the script there um yeah, because if it goes in and um, I think it's still, yeah, because it's still break, it's still um, going, the score is greater than the alpha um, being negative infinity. Um, so then alpha becomes the score of zero. Um, and then, yeah, then as soon as we do compare the worst score of zero to our beta, that doesn't become, it's not quite as useful anymore there. Or sorry, right here. Um, Let's. I just want to give this a go. Um, okay. Just see okay. what we run into here. See if I can get a better feeling for what it's going for. Well, that's here. definitely different. So it did a bit but... more this time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we're going in. Um, we're taking a quick look here. Um, Go back to run, da, da, da. we print out our moves, which is just um, writing down. Um, that's just zero. Uh, the, this move is greater than alpha. Zero is less than beta of positive infinity. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so then we have, now we have down and left, both zero values. Um, we got a beta prune there. So then now we do have right being for us going up, right does mm -hmm. have a negative one now. Um, so this is getting us a little bit more information, do the comparisons. Um, then we're checking, looks like up and down here, uh, beta yeah. pruning. Hmm. Yeah, this still seems like it's definitely pruning where it's like where we don't quite want it to. Yeah. Interesting. We are coming exactly close to time. We have nine mean. minutes left, uh -oh. which is. <laughs> I'm a little afraid. I actually just made it worse in the end. Uh, oh no, you're all good. I mean, we've got. I mean, a. <laughs> no, no one needs ever. to pick up from this, so you're good. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's, as it's, ever, it's an exercise left to the reader. Or exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, um, big attempt. Uh... And I have definitely learned a lot from watching this go down. So that's nice. <laughs> We're into docs mode. Fascinating.
it does feel like the big key is like so this is normally there's that whole thing those two things normally don't happen side by side they're an if then else and it feels like although we can't do the if then else because we don't they simultaneously we don't have the minimizing and maximizing it still feels like them happening one after the other isn't correct yeah it I seems don't like know what we... the alternative is yeah, I, I, I have to think of more about like the tree that we create and how exactly we yeah. look at that. But I could see maybe we might have to put together a different a, a map for the alpha beta values. Because right. yeah. normally you have this like back and forth recursion yeah. allowing you to like, you know, keep track of things. I mean, that was one of the biggest things when I was implementing it was just like thinking about that, you know, like, OK, yeah. what is the value at this point in the tree? Yeah. So it might be that we need um, a more um, fine-grained way to look at the alpha yeah. beta values as we go yeah. deeper into that. Jayla Fayette says, it took me a whole week to get alpha beta pruning working right, so don't feel bad. You mean that coding oh, in 90 second, 90 hour, uh, sorry, 90 minute intervals isn't, <laughs> we'll you can't do everything? Till you, get the, uh, till you get the unit right. <laughs> I yeah, think that's it took the... me like a week and a half to implement it originally. Uh, it was rough. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's yeah, dedication like, I to the I snake. I can do it now. I understand it now. Um, <laughs> maybe not quite still. What, mm. That's that's what we're going to do next season on Coding Badly. Our guest actually can't leave until uh, what they set out to do works. They set a goal at the beginning and they just have to stay here. Mm -hmm. Me and Kevin will go to bed and just leave you on the stream until it works. See so it'll you be like week. actual Hi. work. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, do you want to call it here then? Yeah, I can get some more, a uh, little more documentation added to the README about oh, where I left yeah. off and get that pushed yeah. up, but I don't need to Perfect. do that uh, while we're on air here. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. Wonderful. It's been uh, it's been a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, any... I'm taking the hardest slot. Yeah, literally, uh, <laughs> we... So we have we've, we have cut the original relay short by a week, um, that anyway, but like part of the reason we decided to bring it to a close is because it was getting successively harder for anyone to interact with this code base. Um, and yeah. when I got your initial response about taking part and you were like, oh, this looks great. I can't wait to do alpha beta pruning of this. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> we have someone who's excited to look at this code because the last, like, maybe the last set of emails I had were like, oh my God, what has happened? So thank you so much for being up for this. Thank you for coming to our mad experiment. Um, is there anything you would like to tell? Where can people on the internet find you? What should they look at? What's your snake? What can we know? Uh, yeah, uh, my snake is uh, Shy Loot, although I'll probably be coming up with a new snake name for the next, uh, for the oh, summer league, okay. though. So, um, but yeah, you can find me, um, yeah, at uh, Nasnaz underscore um, on GitHub, but I don't, I don't really do a lot else in the public sphere. I'm mostly <laughs> a totally uh, traditional fun. corporate programmer, so you won't see it too much out there besides my battle snakes. But uh, yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, if you haven't tried battle snakes, go do it. It's fun. Um, also check out New Relic. It makes it, uh, yeah. let me tell you, it makes it a lot easier when you know what your snake's doing in real time. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> New Relic um, are also a partner of Battle Snake, which uh, mm. we are very, is partner the correct term? They're, they're supporting Battle Snake this, this year, which we're very grateful for. And Alec is in a video of, do we have logos? That's a good question. We don't on the, we don't on the Cody Badly mm. brand because we're on, we're unsponsored apparently. No one, no one wants to, no one wants to be affiliated with this nonsense. Um, but uh, Alec has been working on some new Relic tutorials uh, with Aurora, which I believe will be landing soon. So keep an eye out for those. Um, okay. So Alec, we'll, we'll let you go out into the world. Thank you again so much. And we'll yeah, see you later. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, so Hugh asks, is this the last Relay episode? Yes. Um, we decided to wrap it a week early um, for a variety of reasons. Um, as mentioned, uh, booking that the last the last last slot was uh giving us cold sweats um yeah. and also um i made a mistake and actually will be away so next time you see this stream you have kevin kevin what's happening oh, next time well, go on. well the fact that he just did the emoji means maybe we'll do it one more week with you no we're, we're not gonna do that um ne next time two weeks time um yeah. what are we gonna do so one of the ideas we had for next season it, it yeah it might be next season it might be a future season tbd um yeah. is instead of building snakes we will start with a snake and we will get data sent to a web front end live when moves come in and then we will do something with that data so it will be more like visualizing 
Battlesnake right. or making noise with Battlesnake or maybe interacting yeah. with some hardware with Battlesnake. Um, so with that potential future in mind, next time I think what we'll do is just build that build that initial code base that just sends Battlesnake yeah. game data to the front end, which we did with the block. Kind of snake, did with block be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can and be also a that bit. is a mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Jellifet said, oh, I yeah. just noticed that Kevin has things on the third shelf now. Yeah, we, we had an intermission for Kevin to sort his terrible shelf out, um, which does look beautiful. Yeah. He's done a very good job. Um, yeah, so yeah, we were kind of talking about like, I guess to, to give you some behind the scenes, um, part of the reason we wanted to do the relay is we really enjoyed, one of the things we really enjoyed about the Blockly project, uh, which was not, which was before the relay, was um, doing a longer project, but we wanted to have guests on and we also wanted to be more organized because we were a little bit chaotic with the Blockly project. So the whole idea yeah. was to like, hey, can we do a thing where we actually like book guests really far in advance and do a whole season of it? And we've, we've done that. That has been achieved. Um, we had a couple of guests uh, change up because of events outside of anyone's control. Um, including theirs um but otherwise been broadly achieved um but the i guess this is now a retro um it definitely felt like we probably went a little bit too long and also that yeah. the for the guests again as we mentioned we weren't just flattering alec for the guests it got increasingly harder to engage with the code base for especially sure. because like we chose we were like from the beginning we were like we don't know what language everyone's going to be comfortable with so we'll try javascript um and like that immediately wasn't true like you know we had gary on gary's a php guy and was very unhappy that well not very unhappy with javascript but like you know um it's been a while since he's done javascript we had folks who do rust and go i mean there's just never going to be a lingua franca for that so what we kind of want to get back to i guess is like doing projects but being a bit more flexible with them um and so like the idea that kevin just described will give us a base from which we can do all kinds of stuff on a common code yeah. base if we want to and yeah or or the yeah so, so we start with this base project which just pipes with like web sockets data to a front end that does nothing and yeah. then that is the starting point for however many episodes the next season goes on yeah. for but they will start from scratch so we build yeah. this monstrous yeah uh this monstrous so same project. same theme same kind of collect kind of like a coherent it's a collection you know, set of things like, happening yeah. yeah 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 um also um the other nice thing about this um we love the Battlesnake community you're wonderful thank you for being here um but uh by doing something like this we can bring some folks who you know maybe are from different different tech communities who yeah. might not be super comfortable coming on the show to write you know Battlesnake logic but might enjoy other parts about Battlesnake and so you know it's much easier for someone who has done some p5.js before but hasn't thought about Monte exactly. Carlo tree search to come on and you know in exactly. experience Battlesnake via a project like this so that's what's and happening. uh and Hugh you are you are voluntold that there will be some audio project that happens with the web audio API uh, and you're the you're the guest for that one <laughs> I I am like not involved in yeah. that like yeah. like did it, it absolute happened. like hostage taking scenario <laughs> it's done it's done it's basically happened uh, it's it's happened um so yeah if that sounds interesting to anyone else um let us know um i will see you in a month's time kevin will see you in two weeks time um thank you so much for joining us um we battle snake is what is happening next thursday let me uh quick kevin say something witty and imaginative whilst i look up what's happening next week no it's half eight i'm ready for sleep mate. it's half eight yeah it's sleepy time uh next oh, week is deep learning in. with aurora yes he's, he's in. in he's in um so we'll see you at some point um we'll see the final set of the code base if you want to check out the relay um as i mentioned at the beginning um we're going to throw this to the community like this is your snake now this relay does not it ends on Sorry. the show <laughs> it, it ends on the show it does not end though um my goal i don't know if you've seen um i don't know if folks watching have seen uh, a game called mario um, it's a thing that started happening a couple of weeks ago um, and I saw it was like, oh, that's like what we should do with the Relay Snake. So a game called Mario is a Godot engine, started off as a little platformer, and they just threw it out there and they were like, hey, everyone, open a PR and change this game however you want. Um, and that's kind of what we've been doing with the Relay. So that. that's what we're going to, the Relay will live on. We're going to we're gonna throw it out into the world and anyone who wants to add to the Relay, they can. And we'll just, I hope that this will continue to just be a huge growing community snake. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, thank you, Kevin, for being here. Thank you again, Alec. And we will see you all in two weeks' time.
Bye.